This is one of my favorite synthesizers. Um, fully analog. It's a Moog. It has a great history, a great sound. And the Moog designers decided to kind of try something different since the Slim Fatty and previously the Voyager um, and try a different structure, different oscillators, and overall just a whole new instrument, whole new sound engine. But that can be misleading because it's not really a whole new sound engine. It's a traditional analog synthesizer because you do have your modulation, your oscillator, your mixer, your filter, and your envelopes and your output. So the voice structure is from our point of view, being a sound designer and the performer, it's the same as any other analog subtractive synthesizer. But there is one key difference. The oscillators, they tune like that. So there's no more waiting around for them to warm up, adjust to humidity. They're good to go. They hold their tune very well. The filter, good old Moog 24 dB uh, ladder filter. However, the multi-drive, it's been discussed in many videos, so I won't go too much into it, but it's a gain pre and post filter, so you're not gonna get the MS-20 squeal, but you will get some nice grainy, kind of distorted uh, lead sounds out of it. The filter's very snappy. You have one for your filter envelope, you have one for the amplifier envelope. I can tell you that they are very quick, they're very clicky if you want them to be, um, and they're very smooth. So let's get into it and check out the sub fatty. We have two oscillators. We have the footage up top, i.e. the pitch range, the octaves, uh, for both of them. Oscillator one has a hard sync button. Moog's very good because they give you, they're all analog oscillators, but they give you variable waveforms from triangle all the way to a pulse wave. Now, I have noticed that you hear where the actual sawtooth begins to turn into a square wave. Right there, that's that sweet spot. So if you can get it just below, right about there, that's a perfect sawtooth. Very good. Oscillator two now, same idea. It gives you the footage or the octave selectors. Now it gives you an independent frequency. This is how you're gonna detune oscillator two from one. So you get those really cool phasey sounds. And it gives you the same waveform adjustment. Okay, onto the mixer section. We have oscillator one volume, we have sub oscillator volume, we have oscillator two volume, and we have the noise generator volume. The noise is a little peculiar in this case. It's kind of a darker noise. Let's hear it. It's very rough, but it's very good for kick sounds and whatever else you can think of. And coincidentally enough, the more you raise the resonance on your filter, a little more wider it becomes. That's nice, but it is a little peculiar. Now the one thing I didn't mention in the oscillator section is that there is a sub-octave oscillator. You're not going to be able to adjust the pitch, um, but you will be able to adjust the amplitude. It is a square wave, by the way, as well. Very nice sounding. Next up, the filter section. This is the bread and butter of the Moog synthesizer. We have a 12 dB per octave mode. We have a 24 dB per octave mode. We have an 18 dB per octave mode and a 6 dB per octave, which is great. And you can access this either through the somewhat complicated uh, onboard menu system, or you can also do it much more easily with the plugin patch editor. In the patch editor, they call it a one to a four pole. So at six dB, you're looking at a one pole, and four pole is a 24 dB filter. It's a standard Moog ladder filter. Nothing has changed. So you have your cutoff, your resonance, and you have multi-drive. Now the multi-drive is a little bit different than say a Slim Fatty's uh, overdrive. 
The multi-drive has a pre and post filter gain boost. So you're going to get some pretty raunchy sounds. However, don't expect that MS-20 squelch. Let's hear it. Now we also have envelope generator amount. So what this does is this links the actual cutoff knob to your filter envelope. The keyboard amount determines at a value of zero, the filter's cutoff value will not track your keyboard. However, if it's at a 10, it will track twice as fast as your plane. So for instance, if I put it in the middle with a good amount of resonance so we can hear it. No tracking. Let me put it straight up. It's about half, all the way up. And the nice thing is that it does self-oscillate. And let's have some fun. Pretty nice. Let's check out the envelope section. Okay, now the envelope section. The envelope generators are very important for any type of synthesizer. They are what create dynamic and movement in your sound. So for example, let's use the cutoff filter that I mentioned before with some envelope generator amount. We'll turn that up all the way. Now this is now going to have your cutoff frequency be affected by your filter envelope. Turn the attack up slightly and the delay up slightly. It's nice, it's really snappy. Very good. And it does have a negative value as well. When you use a negative value on your envelope generator amount, you're gonna to wanna to have your filter pretty much wide open because essentially it's gonna go like this. Lastly, but certainly not least, the amplifier envelope. The amplifier envelope acts the same way the filter envelope does, except it affects the volume of the synthesizer. So in this case, we're going to have a slow attack, uh, a pretty quick decay, no sustain, no release. Let's see. Now let's move on to the modulation source. We have a great modulation section on the sub fatty. It gives us our LFO rate, which is identified by this blinking LED. It gives us our source, so we can either have a triangle wave, like a traditional LFO, square wave, sawtooth wave, a ramp wave, which is essentially a polar inverse saw wave, a sample and hold waveform. And the nice touch is they gave us filter envelope generator as a source to a destination of, say, pitch amount filter amount or wave amount. So if I turn up wave amount slightly, turn my mod wheel up all the way. Now this is where you have to be careful because you will actually run out of room. So turn your wave amount down to about like two. So that's really nice, and you can access it in the punch button style menu here, but it's much easier to access this in the plugin editor. But what you can do is change the rate of the LFO from either, I think it is slow, medium, and fast. Meaning that on the slow setting in the plugin editor, 
it'll give you an extremely long cycle. Um, conversely, if you put it on the fast setting in the plugin editor, it gives you a broad range up to, I think, 2 kilohertz. So it's well in the audible range where you can then start doing uh, almost like FMing, which is kind of cool. Now this is, I think, in the in the middle section, so. pretty wild. If we go to filter envelope generator, now we can basically use a filter envelope to change the pitch of oscillator 2, which I have in sync mode to oscillator 1. It's a very nice synthesizer, nice touch adding the octave switches instead of having to try to change both oscillators simultaneously with the octave switches. The patch section, it's okay. So for what it's worth, not too bad. Right now I have it in the 6 dB per octave mode for the filter. This one I have it set in the 12 dB per octave mode. Now I have it set for the 18 dB per octave mode. Finally, the 24 dB per octave mode. That wraps it up. Thank you for watching. I hope you like my little demo of the Moog Sub Fatty. If there's something else you guys would like me to do, please let me know and I'll do my best to bring that to you. Also, down below, please write your comments, your thoughts on sound design, synthesis in general, the industry. Help me out. Let me get this going. I would really appreciate it. Um, anything you'd like, I'd be glad to start a discussion. That's kind of the whole point of this uh, series. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time. Bop, bop, bop.